Hello, this is Paul Weiss. Um, I'm the nanoscience faculty at UCLA and also the founding and current editor-in-chief of the journal ACS Nano. Thank you so much for including me in this uh, panel and discussion and giving me the uh, chance to speak here. We're talking about uh, nano impact on this uh, panel. And uh, one of the things I'd like to you know, be clear about for background is that nano components aren't obvious in the devices that use them, such as our cell phones, computers, uh, medical diagnostics, and so forth. Much like the old uh, Intel inside ad, I, uh, we have to let people know uh, that nano is a key feature of what, uh, what they use around them every day. Uh, also, uh, we don't have a, an organization like the ACS or APS or MRS arguing for nano are uh, reaching out to uh, legislators and the public, and we have to do a better job of letting people know what it is we're doing uh, for uh, the world and uh, what we're doing for them. Uh, it's important that we capture uh, the imagination of both the public and the uh, decision makers. And exploring the nanoscale world is very much like exploring space from the uh, point of view of beauty and what we have to show, but at the same time, we're enabling new technologies. And so I think taking uh, some pages from the uh, book that astronomers have used and uh, space scientists uh, for many years, as well as arguing for what it is we contribute to, uh, to our everyday lives, as well as the economy are going to be a very important uh, as we go forward. Now, something that's special to nanoscience uh, became apparent when a group of us was asked to say what it is that we'd done during the first decade of the National Nanotechnology Initiative and what it is that we might do if we were to continue being funded at that level or higher of the first decade. Uh, we wrote up a series of pieces uh, for ACS Nano along those lines. And the conclusion that we came to was that there are really two different directions that the field had taken. One was we could make atomically precise structures and explore and ultimately take advantage of the new properties that we'd found. And that also at those, uh, those very small scales, even in the precise structures that were, there was heterogeneity that was important uh, in terms of function. Uh, that's really a story for another panel in another day. Uh, but the other piece that came out of that was that unlike any other fields, we developed communication skills. And that really had come about because we came from people getting together from chemistry, physics, materials, biology, engineering, uh, toxicology, medicine, and so forth uh, to put together uh, the field that we know as nanoscience. And in doing so, we took on each other's problems, we took on each other's tools and we took on each other's approaches. And uh, those communication skills continue to this day. And any trainees who are listening should know that you have skills that others do not. And you can take advantage of that in any number of uh, different ways in the future. In particular, uh, we've continued to develop new tools to open up new worlds, to address specific questions, but that's also allowed us to, to open up uh, new questions in our field. And you know that's, I think, the analogy of how the biotechnology revolution was moved forward by the development of the automated DNA and protein sequencing instruments and the automated DNA and, and protein synthesis uh, instruments that have really enabled us to do much more than was possible before the, uh, for instance, the Human Genome Project, that was a driver for a lot of those technologies. We've written up some of these ideas in this paper and one specific example of where we lay out challenges in a field that could change patient treatment and, and outcome uh, through inspired engineering and nanotechnology. Uh, we wrote up with an interventional radiologist, Rami Aklu, uh, now at uh, the Mayo Clinic Scottsdale and Ali Khadim Husseini who now runs the uh, Terasaki Institute uh, here in Los Angeles. Uh, as a result of this ability to draw people together and fields together, we've gone beyond what's simply nano 
and really uh, been at the center of a number of other efforts. And so the two most prominent, I think, were the BRAIN Initiative, which came from a nanoscience panel that had been put together by the Office of Science and Technology Policy. And I was honored to be a part of that, where we said that the, the scales of state-of-the-art semiconductor technologies had coincidentally reached the scale of function, the synapse scale in the brain, and that while one didn't, didn't uh, easily merge with the others, the idea that we could measure at those scales should be leveraged to listen in on the brain and neural circuits to try to understand what a thought is, what a memory is, the difference between function and malfunction in healthy and diseased brains, or at least animal models of disease. Uh, because of the great success in drawing people in from so many fields, we were also asked to put together the technology roadmap for the microbiome initiative that's arguably even less nano. And there we brought in people from oceanography and microbiology and atmospheric science and soil science and so forth, in addition to nanoscientists and mathematicians and data scientists and others who could be useful in understanding the microbiome. And both of these projects had tremendous impact far beyond nano and our role as we see it uh, looking out into the world is to see where it is we can take advantage of the skills that we've gained. And I think it's important that we let others know that we've, we've done so. Uh, and let me touch on the quantum initiative because that comes up quite often, right? That is not as broad a field as nano is, nor has it developed the same communication skills we have. So I would say nano can help the quantum initiative and many of the people in the quantum initiative come from nano but I don't think it displaces uh, what it is we're doing in any way, uh, nor does it have the, the punch uh, you know, above our weight that I think that uh, uh, nano has developed. And so uh, it's important for us to convey that to others, uh, going uh, back more directly to the metrics. Uh, you know, I'll argue as a, a journal letter and an academic that uh, if one establishes quantitative metrics, people play to those. You know, think for example of the college rankings that take into account, you know, how nice a gym is. Well, some colleges will go build better gyms as a result, uh, but that doesn't really say, you know, specifically uh, what the college is. Likewise for impact factors, right? Some journals will include material that'll appear in the numerator, but not the denominator. And so the impact factor will bear little relation to what the articles appearing in that journal uh, will see in terms of citations and so forth. So if we just establish a bunch of quantitative metrics, uh, then, you know, mindless uh, people will uh, follow those. Uh, you know, they can be used to drive policy if we, if we so choose, if there's something that we really want to see, but there's really no, uh, no way to, uh, to uh, displace scholarship. Uh, now applied research, we're gonna hear uh, from Peter Grzynski at NCI uh, about uh, some of the uh, outcomes of his uh, programs there. And one can list startup companies, licensed patents, jobs. Again, you know, meaningless, counting uh, patents uh, mindlessly doesn't really uh, tell us about impact, but actual employment and so forth, which is certainly one of our goals on the applied side uh, that that is something that we can see, you know, down the road uh, from what we do and already currently, as you'll hear uh, from many companies, a basic research is much more difficult to measure. And so it's hard to say what's a really significant discovery. Uh, but, you know, I think we can uh, use our, our regular reviews to highlight those. Uh, we can look at what what uh, new tools have been developed. And in particular, uh, we're training uh, the workforce uh, beyond nano. Uh, we have a lot of our students going up to Silicon Valley. The number one question we're asked in the in the uh, you know due diligence checks is, can these uh, students or postdocs uh, talk and work across fields? Uh, and sometimes there isn't any uh, technical check at all. It's really just can we can these students work? Uh, with others. And so I just want to finish up by adding again that we're training nanoscientists uniquely. Uh, they have impact across a broad range of fields. And I think that continued support for the education and training mission is something that we can, uh, we can and should do. 
and that we can and should measure. Thank you uh, very much.